Welcome to the world of Pokemon. A mystical world where people and Pokemon live side by side in a myriad of beautiful and exotic locations. With creatures that astound the mind and warm the soul. I mean, look at that face. Oh, I could stroke you forever. <laughs> We've been having adventures in these worlds for well over 20 years. With friends and family bringing people together and there seems to be no end in sight. The mechanics and graphics have improved steadily year by year, but they've stayed relatively the same games that we all know and love. We've luckily had snapshots of the older titles, showing us how it's grown over the years. Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy, Leaf Green and Fire Red for the Game Boy Advance, and now Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee for the Nintendo Switch. We've updated graphics and features pulled from the hugely popular mobile game Pokemon Go. It may not be a main series game, but it looks and feels like a nostalgia injection with enough new mechanics to justify another playthrough. I chose Pikachu, because that's what I wanted, okay? Get off my back! Plus, he's a little yellow powerhouse with a cuteness rating of 10, and I wanted the classic yellow experience. All the Pokemon stories tend to be very similar, because if they slightly deviate from the standard format, then the Japanese economy crashes. I think we can all remember what happened after Pokemon Coliseum. The country of Japan was set back 400 years, and 2,000 Japanese schoolchildren went without school dinners. So, to save thousands of lives, they went with the tried and true. You're a young boy or girl in the region of Kanto, who sets out on a journey to complete their Pokedex, a giant encyclopedia that fills with information once you capture a Pokemon. Whilst doing so, you learn to battle, level up, and increase the power of your team, so you can eventually become the Pokemon Champion. A brilliant new feature of this game is that you can see the Pokemon walking around. It's no longer random encounters in tall grass or caves. It's a refreshing shake-up. It adds realism to the world in a whole new wave of strategy. You know exactly what's available to capture and adds excitement when you see something you haven't seen before. Now, capturing Pokemon uses the motion controllers, throwing the balls directly at the Pokemon straight from the get-go rather than battling and weakening them first. So now there's a mini-game where you aim for an ever-closing circle and try to get a higher capture bonus by getting it into as small as opening as possible. Not gonna lie, I was super excited for my first throw. Having to use your whole arm to throw a Pokeball to capture something, it fulfilled a childish dream of mine and left a big smile on my face. Now, because the game prioritises capturing Pokemon, new and old, en masse, the economy changes to allow for more Pokeballs. Winning battles now gives you Pokeballs and you find them everywhere, plus they're relatively quite cheap to buy. You'll end up with hundreds before long and they're needed. Catching Pokes gives you both experience for your team and also candies. Candies are special items which allow you to increase the stats of your Pokemon. There are multiple different kinds and even rarer candies which can only be used by certain Pokemon. For those that don't play Pokemon, it must look like... My draft's better than your draft. Right. 3, 2, 1... Which, to be fair to them, they're not far off. A strong element of the game is battling other trainers. Turn-based combat with strong RPG stat elements. With also a slight rock, paper and scissors aspect to effectiveness against each other. Fire is strong against grass, grass is strong against water, water is strong against fire, and monkey is good against raccoon. There's a lot more types, so a lot of strategy is needed in certain battles, especially when you start to get to the gyms. Gyms are set up to challenge and test the skills of the trainers in the area. Headed by gym leaders, tough trainers at the height of their careers you need to defeat in order to advance the story. They tend to have mastered one particular type of Pokemon like Rock, Water, Electric, which can mean trouble if you haven't got anything effective against them, or can mean a landslide victory if you have someone who's super effective against them. The interior of the gyms represent the personality and type of Pokemon used. If the gym leader uses water Pokemon like Mista in the Cerulean Gym, then it's a bright and beautiful swimming pool, decorated with murals of water Pokemon and coral. If it's grass Pokemon like Erika in the Celadon Gym, 
and it's a colourful topiary maze with wildflowers and trees guiding you to the leader. If you manage to beat them, they reward you with a gym badge and a TM. The gym badges have a use. Once you collect 8, you can take on the Pokemon League, the final ultimate challenge for all trainers. So get ready to have all your skills put to the test. These four trainers will push you to the max. You need to fight all four in a row and cannot leave till you win or lose. So good luck with that trainers. To protect their title, they're not going to go down without a fight. There are some cameo stars to battle in the game as well. Your old rival, Blue, from the previous games. He's not as much a rival anymore, but a friendly acquaintance. Jesse and James from the cartoon can be taken on in a double battle and go down just as easy as in the show. And when you beat six master trainers, you can even challenge Red, the protagonist of the original Red and Blue games. Cheeky easter eggs that are uh, up for the experience. When any of your Pokemon faint or are injured, you can travel to a Pokemon Center completely free and they'll heal all your team back to tip top shape. Each town has one. We hope to see you again. What a horrible thing to say in a hospital. You can stare at my shorts. Alright, yeah sure, what's the, what's the worst that can happen? No, 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 no. The bicycle is gone, but has been replaced with the fact you can ride some Pokemon. This to me is better than some emotionless bike, as it creates a greater bond with your team. Knowing you can hop onto your Pokemon and speed along is a great feeling. A combination of pride and giddiness as you strut your stuff on the Pokemon you raised. They're not all quicker options, some are quicker than others. You can even ride some in the air and on the water. Plus, even if you can't ride them, all Pokemon in the game can follow you around out of the balls. It's such a cool feature, it adds more to the world. Oh, did I forget to mention a very important feature? FASHION SHOW! You can dress up you and your Pokemon in different outfits and accessories. It's all superficial and doesn't affect any aspect of the game, but it is oddly addictive. I was sat there for 20 minutes before deciding on the dapper police uniform. He looking fly! And if things couldn't get any better, you can play as Pikachu. Oh my god! It's only for a short moment, literally 10 seconds. But I took my sweet time and enjoyed Pikachu's silky smooth movement. There are still super rare Pokemon located in the world. So we get to welcome back Articuno, Zapdos and Moltres. The three legendary birds have these amazing cutscenes where they swoop in and show off their elemental strength and graceful forms. Gone are the days of just Gah! and then a battle. It gives this grandness to finding these legendary birds. A pure cinematic experience that makes you wish you could just watch them fly around a little bit longer. The same can be said for Mewtwo. It's adding depth and character to old school nostalgia. The music in the games are remixes of all the old classic tunes from Pokemon. It's an intravenous drip of nostalgia tickling your brain. There were constant moments I found myself smiling at staple songs I heard so much as a kid. Now this is the definition of a feel good game. Something that this game accomplishes where others have fallen flat is the size and weight of the Pokemon. With the older games fighting a JPEG of Onyx with your JPEG, they look the same size. So it loses something, the Pokemon are losing character and depth. But when you battle Brock and you see the height of this rock snake, it actually feels a little intimidating. Like you're actually taking your little forest critters against an actual monster. That's what you're supposed to feel. My imagination did most of the work as a child, but now as a man-child, the game imparts that feeling naturally. Well played. The game is a little bit hand-holdy at the beginning, but honestly, there's two reasons for that. One is that it's trying to bring in a whole new audience, and it wants it to be a welcoming experience. And two, returning players will need to know the updated mechanics, as the capture mechanics have been completely overhauled. There was blood, sweat, and tears in recording this footage. I hope you didn't want to see any Cinnabar Island footage, because my Elgato is a dick. So I'm missing just a tiny bit of all the 7th Gym and Pokemon Mansion. So, um, I'm sorry about that. 
Fucking Windows 98! The game is a brilliant, well-crafted, nostalgia-driven call-out to fans new and old. It was an excellent adventure, and a fantastic reimagining of the classic 1998 game Pokemon Yellow, keeping the spirit of the series with enough new features to get me excited and to justify another playthrough. With this, if you have a Nintendo Switch, get one of these games, you will not regret it. Amazing gameplay, clear goals, an amazing post game with tons of quests and rematches, over a hundred Pokemon to catch, trading and battling, fun with friends and just as fun as a single player experience. So get out there and catch them all folks. I just want to give a huge shout out to my team, Pikachu, Venusaur, Sandslash, Charizard, Blastoise and Dragonite. They got me through thick and thin, so peace and love my sweet destructive squad. Thank you very much for watching the Pokemon Let's Go review today. If you enjoyed what you saw, please give it a like. I publish new videos as often as I can, and if you want to see more, please subscribe and ring that bell to let you know when new videos are available.